Why we must not fear man. Job 14 verse 1 and 2 reads, Man that is born of a woman is a few days, and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. If Christ tells us not to fear man, then there must be a good reason for that. You see, there is only one being that we must fear, and that is God. On no occasion are we at liberty to fear any other thing, be it physical or spiritual. An angel appeared to John on the island of Patmos, and John was afraid. As he attempted to bow, the angel restricted him, saying, Worship God. This happened in Revelation 19 verse 10. So, God is supreme over all things and His control over the universe is absolute. If we are not permitted to worship spirits, and we are not expected to fear Satan, how much less are we to fear man? The moment we begin to fear people and dance to their tune, we have made them God over our lives. No matter what someone may mean to you or the relationship that exists between you, if such is not under the control of God, you must not fear him or her. Without God, man is less than nothing. He is reduced to the dust of the earth. Herod spoke boastfully, and he was applauded by men to have spoken like an angel, but the moment God struck him, he was eaten up by worms at the spot. Acts 12 verse 21 to 23 And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, set upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, it is the voice of a god, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms, and gave up the ghost. What is man? Nebuchadnezzar, who gained control over the entire universe at his own time, boasted in his words, and he usurped the glory that should have been given to God. He was sent into the jungle for a seven years tutorial. He grew feathers and claws, ate grasses and was a victim of dews and rain until he humbled himself. What is man that we should fear him? There is nothing in any human on earth that qualifies him or her to be feared. God is the only one we must fear and obey. Like the Hebrew men, we must not fear any man. Thank God for delivering the three Hebrew boys. At least that encourages us to stand firm. But even if God would have us go through some tough times, we must learn to fear God still. Job said something striking during his challenge. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Is your boss asking you to do something ungodly? Dare to stand like Job and say, The worst is that I will lose my job, but if I have not lost God, then I have lost nothing. Are you facing persecution of any sort for your faith in Christ? Are you under a threat to renounce your faith? Dare to stand like the early apostles who said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Acts 4 verse 19 The worst that any man can do is to afflict your body, but your soul and your spirit is not under their control. Meanwhile, your body is only a container of your true self. No man has control over your hidden inward man. Your soul and your spirit can only be controlled by God. 
There is, therefore, a limitation to human threats. Never fear any man. They are all like shadow that fades away. The Great Warning in the Bible Luke 12, verse 4 and 5, I say unto you, friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Every word that Christ speaks in the scripture is notable, and as believers we must not play down on them. Today we are taking a study on one of the warnings Jesus gave believers. This warning borders on who we are to fear and who we are not to fear. Before Jesus ever told us who we are to fear, he had seen that there is a misplacement of priority along this line. As believers, we are not to fear man, we are to fear God. But Jesus already saw that our propensity to fear man is higher than our fear of God. For instance, many Christians will not pay attention to the instructions God has given in scriptures, but they would do everything to please their bosses at their various places of work because they feared to be sacked. Meanwhile, some ungodly bosses would have people working under them to do things that are ungodly. The early apostles heeded this warning of Christ about who we should fear. They had no fear of any man, and they would rather be persecuted than to disobey God. They had no fear of death because they know that death is only the gateway to an eternal reality which no man can influence. Acts 4 verse 19 reads, But Peter answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Similarly, Paul said, To me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. That is, everything we do, both in time and in eternity, must be with the consciousness of Christ. If we live, we must live for Christ, and if we die, we die in Him. Why must we fear God? Luke 12 verse 4 and 5 I say unto you, friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Hebrews 10 verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We grossly underestimate God. God is not some bubbling grandfather who sits in the heavens and has nothing better to do than to watch earth. The Bible tells us our God is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. God is not a genie in a bottle. Who is there to wait on your hand and foot? He is a consuming fire. He is not a last resort you can call on after all else has failed. He is a consuming fire. He is the invisible spirit being that created everything that you see and everything that you know. He is the invisible spirit being that winds and waves obey. He is the invisible spirit being that Isaiah saw in the year of the king Uzziah died, sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. He is the invisible spirit being we see in Revelation 20 verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. He is the invisible spirit being that every demon of hell knows, and every demon of hell fears. James 2 verse 19, 
thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Although God gave us a choice, he made us as people who have free will. It is true that every one of us can decide what we would do, but we must also bear in mind that we can only choose our actions. We cannot choose the consequences of our actions. You can choose not to fear God, to live your life without the instructions given in his word. You can determine to live without God, but remember that the consequences of your actions are inescapable. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. Paul, speaking to the Corinthian Christians, said that they persuade men to repent because they know the terror of God. It is better to learn about the wrath of God than to experience it. Fear God. Obey God. Honor God. You don't have to eat grass for seven years like Nebuchadnezzar if you can just fear God and obey him. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah can testify that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. The people that experienced the flood during the days of Noah will heed the warning if they are given the opportunity to return to the world. If we heed the warning of Christ, we will escape the judgment of God.